Good morning, everyone. I would like to explain just how easy it is to do some of my patterns that you uh, can get from Cindy Wood. This happens to be the baby double diamonds. It's, this is the lovey that I'm showing you. The blanket is here as well, but this is the double diamond design. It's all E-wraps and pearls. And of course, the only other stitch is the unit on the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna take a sample here. I already have something on my big loom, so I can't use that one to show you. So I'll use this 7 16 sample here. And here are two rows, sample rows that I made up. So row one, if you're reading my pattern in row one and the K is knits, that is here. Your border is knits. Turn, this will always be a turning peg and you always skip it at the beginning of the row. Then you will knit these three. You will do this pattern here across these pegs, then knit and you wrap. And then you'll turn around and you're gonna skip this peg because this will be the start of the next row. And then number two says purl, so you'll purl. And then you'll do this pattern across here and purl, and then e-wrap or u-wrap this stitch here. So let's try one of these. Now on my pattern, when it's such a long string like this, I like to take and put two groups together, like two stitches together. And in my mind, I say knit one, purl one, and knit one, purl one, as I'm knitting along. Also, there's 10, and there's 10 here. Now, if you're working on a big loom, and you have multiples of 10, I like to put stitch markers so that I know where these 10 are going would be between the stitch markers. In this case, it's between this and this, which is my border. Okay, so the first thing it says to do is knit one, purl one, but you have to knit. So first, we're gonna knit the border. Okay. Make sure you can see. Okay, the next part says knit one, purl one. So we're gonna do that, knit one. And the next one is a purl. Okay, we did this group. So now we're gonna do the next two, knit one, purl one. Bear with me, the camera's here in front of me and I'm not used to looming with a camera in front of me, but we're gonna get through this because I want you to see how easy this really is. Okay, so we did knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. The next one is knit two, purl one. Knit, knit off, and purl. On my pattern, I will have what kind of knit to use. On almost all my patterns, it's a knee wrap. If it's anything other than that, I will definitely have that written on my pattern. Okay, so now we've done three sets. Now we're up to knit one, purl one, and then the very last knit one. This is a lot easier on my large loom also, but I'm just trying to show you, okay? Again, it was knit here. The, the big red letter after the row is knit. That means you're knitting your two border sides. And then here, I just do a U-wrap I just go like this because I like to hold my yarn here in the front. You can do it like this if you want. Some people e-wrap, that's up to you. I prefer the U-wrap, it gives me a beautiful, nice edge. Here's the edge of the lovey. And you can see the beautiful, nice chain stitch there. This is the beautiful chain stitch ending and the beginning chain stitch here. Everything matches, your sides, your edges all match. Okay, so now we're on this side, so we're on row two. Row two has a P for purl. That means we're gonna skip this first peg and we're gonna purl the next three. And those are our borders. That creates the garter stitch border as you're going. Okay, 
okay? And now we're back to the pattern again. This time it starts with purl one, knit one. You can see that here on, on the pattern, maybe. There, knit one, purl one. Or purl one, knit one, I'm sorry. Purl one. The next one is purl one, knit four. This yarn splits a little bit. It's harder to work with. Okay, now the next section is the purl one, knit one, and then the final purl one. If at any time you forget where you are, you have you should have your stitch markers on, and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, till you know you're here. So also a good tip is if I have to walk away from it, I'll put a stitch marker here, and that also tells me which way I'm going and what stitch I'm on. Okay, so I'm gonna end with the purl one, Knit one. And the purl one. Okay, also my border says row two is purl. So I'll purl these three border pegs. And you wrap that last one. Okay, and that's two. Now, on my pattern, however, when you're using a big round loom like this one here, this big, big round, let me show you. Big round one. Okay, you might need to repeat this a whole bunch of times. So like, you'll have your stitch markers on your pegs and you'll do this through there or through here, whichever way you happen to be going, and then you'll have another stitch marker. So you'll repeat this again, and when you get to the next, you'll repeat it again. It depends how many pegs you're using. You might repeat it six times. You might repeat it ten times around the loom. But then when you get back to the other side, you'll come to your stitch markers, and you will continue to knit purl. I always remember that odds are knits and evens are purls. If you can't remember that, though, this is what you do. You write it down. I use a steno pad. I've also, on some of my latest Afghan patterns, I've been putting a picture of my steno pad and how I just tally mark each row when I'm done. It's so easy that way. I use a little ruler that clips onto my book to help keep my place. But anyway, if you can do that, if you can follow something like this, you can do any of my patterns, absolutely any of my patterns. But the latest ones, the, the baby double diamond, the one I'm working on here that I haven't completed yet, and that uh, American Afghan, they are all done using a pattern similar to this and can be done on, I love doing the 7 16th. You can also use an infinity loom, the KB infinity loom is 7 16th with a bunch of pegs. So you can do the same design on that. Um, I'm working on this new design here. And uh, also you can change colors. And on my patterns, if you're able to change colors, I always list that on there, what row is best to do that. It looks great, the edges look great. This is the back, of course you've got your line on the back. Not much ways of getting around that. Here's your colors, how they blend in. All my knots are right here. Because of the way I do my color scheme changes, all my knots are hidden in the border, and there's another video for that. All right, I hope you have a great day, and uh, see you later. Bye.